Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam, rasulillah. So the first dua that the author he gives us in this section pertaining to the duas that we say when we come up from the ruku is Sami Allahu liman hamidah, Sami Allahu liman hamidahu. So this hadith is in Bukhari, one of the narrations from Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal idha qal al-imam Sami Allahu liman hamidahu when the imam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that when the imam he says Sami Allahu liman hamidahu فَقُولُوا اللَّهُمَّ رَبَّنَا لَكَ الْحَمْدِ Then say these words, اللَّهُمَّ رَبَّنَا لَكَ الْحَمْدِ فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ وَافَقَ قَوْلُهُ قَوْلُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ For certainly the one whose statements coincide with the statement of the angels, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Then his or her previous sins will be forgiven. And as we said, this narration from Abu Hurair رضي الله عنه is collected by the Imam of Hadith, Imam Bukhari رحم الله تعالى. So the words we're looking at in this narration is Sami Allahu liman hamidahu Sami Allahu liman hamidahu Thanyan sharhu mufradat al-hadithi The explanation of some of the words of the hadith Qawluhu Sami Allahu liman hamidahu Ay ajaba dua man hamidahu Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua of the one that is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wa ma'na yasma'u Allah lakum yastajib dua'akum and the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears you is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers your du'as. Thanyan, qawluhu liman hamidahu. So after looking at sami Allahu liman hamidahu, we look again at the word liman hamidahu. Alhamd huwa wasful mahmud bi sufat al kamal ma'al mahabba wa ta'adim. So what does hamd mean? That the one who praises Allah answer, Allah answers the calls to the one who praises Allah. We've taken hamd many times. And just again to add to what we've taken before, Alhamdu huwa wasful mahmud. Hamd is to describe the one who is being praised, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi sifat al kamal, with complete and perfect attributes, ma'al mahabba, whilst having love of Allah azawajal, and ta'zim, and magnification and glorification and awe of Allah's majesty. So as we know, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an important etiquette that we are supposed to say before we make dua to Allah azawajal. As the Prophet sallallahu mentioned in some narrations when he heard the man making dua, he said, Oh you, before you make dua, then send peace and blessings upon Allah azawajal, upon the Prophet sallallahu praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then make your dua. Because it's not from the etiquettes that the person straight away jumps into making dua without having first groveled to Allah, begged to Allah, through his names and his attributes like people do in the world right when you go to somebody of status and somebody of power etc people before asking something from that person they grovel to them they praise them and Allah Azawajal is the most deserving in praise because he's the one that truly owns all praise <clears throat> in the hadith it was mentioned whoever's statement coincides with the statements of the angels this is pertaining to when the person says ameen in the salah praying in jama'ah praying in congregation the imam says ameen and then the person also says ameen <coughs> meaning that this person's statement it coincides with this timing and the statement of the angels so the person gives says Amin when the angels are also saying Amin. This is the correct understanding. The Imam Qadi Al-Ayyad he said, He gave a statement saying that the meaning of this is that the person's Ta'min, the person's Amin coincides with the angels in terms of how the person is saying it. Wal khushu wal ikhlas that the person not only says it in the same way that the angels are saying it, but also in terms of he has submission like the angels have submission, and he has sincerity like the angels they have sincerity. And this is a key and important point, which is that when we make dhikr or dua that have these amazing huge rewards, they're not like magic pills that we take this pill and all of a sudden our sins are going to be forgiven and removed or we're going to be raised in amazing ranks that doesn't just happen out of the blue rather what it means is that when you say these du'as and these dhikr you say them with a conscious mind you say them with deep reflection and you say them whilst trying to live upon the dictates 
and the meanings of these dhikr. Not that you are somebody who is continually sinful and then you say these dhikr thinking that it's going to remove from you all of your sins. It doesn't work like that. Rather, you say it with you know, a conscious mind reflecting upon the meanings and trying your best to implement the meanings in your day-to-day -day life. That is the true meaning. Thirdly, what we benefit from the hadith. That this dhikr, it is said whilst the person is raising up from the ruku. So it's not said before you raise up or after it. So it's like the takbiratul intiqal. Takbiratul intiqal are the takbirs that we say when we move from position to position. So whenever you say takbir, moving from one position to the next position and you're saying the takbir, you don't make the takbir at the beginning of the movement, nor do you make it at the end of the movement. Rather, you make the takbir as you are moving between the two positions. Likewise here, you say Sami Allah liman hamida as you are moving through the two positions. So many of the Imams who lead the Muslims in prayer, they make a mistake. When they go into sujood, for example, and they make the takbir, what they do is they make the takbir when they get to the sujood position. And the reasoning they say is that we are afraid that the people behind us, as soon as they hear the takbir, we're afraid that they're going to prostrate before us. This is an incorrect understanding. Rather, if the people make a mistake, it doesn't mean that you then should change the sunnah and make another mistake. Rather, the sunnah is, the legislated way is of saying the takbir in the prayer, is that you say it whilst moving from position to position. And likewise, Sami Allahu liman hamida. <clears throat> so this dhikr you say it if you are the imam or you are praying by yourself as for the ma'mum the one who is following the imam then that person will say as we will take in the coming dhikr the person says it's recommended in sunnah when saying Sami Allah liman hamida, that the person raises their hands up to the mankibain, up to the shoulders, or up to the earlobes, or between them. These are all three narrations that are narrated, and the best of them is to do between the, sh the shoulders and the earlobes. Allah knows best. in the takbir al haram. So you raise your hands like you would raise for the opening takbir. And also, we benefit and we should ponder with this dhikr Sami Allah liman hamida that Allah listens to the one and responds to the one that is praising him or praises Allah that Allah's hearing is perfect and nothing escapes Allah's hearing so this should bring about an awareness in us and a shyness in us that we are careful to speak only good and to do only good how shy we would be if we were speaking bad speech and somebody of honor or standing in our community or even our parents was in the same room as us listening to our bad speech, we will feel really embarrassed. How would we feel if the Prophet ﷺ was in the same room as us while we are speaking bad speech? We'd feel totally embarrassed. Then how about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is more majestic and more rightful of us to have shame in what we are saying in front of him. And Allah Azawajal is with us completely in terms of his power, his knowledge and his ability to reach us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there not in his being but in his knowledge and from his knowledge that is that he hears us completely what we are saying so we should have shyness when we speak and we should try to only speak good and listen to only that which is good the next uh, dhikr that the author he brings for us in this book Hassan al-Muslim may Allah have mercy upon his soul Sheikh al-Kahtani rahimahullah ta'ala he says Rabbana wa lakil hamd hamdan kathiran tayyiban barakan fi this is the dhikr that we're going to look at now رَبَّنَا وَلَكِ الْحَمْدِ حَمْدٍ كَثِيرًا طَيِّبًا مُبَارَكًا فِيهِ أَشَرْحُ لَفْضُ الْحَدِيثِ Okay, this hadith, the narration that we're going to look at is in Bukhari from Rafi' ibn Rafi' al-Zuraqi al-Zuraqi رضي الله عنه قال كُنَّ يَوْمًا نُصَلِّ وَرَأَى النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم One day we were praying behind the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says this companion فَلَمَّا رَفَعَ رَأْسَهُ مِنَ الرَّقْعَةِ قَالْ So when the Prophet ﷺ raised his head from the ruku, he said, سَمِّيَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَهُ As we took. 
قال رجل مراءه a person said from be, who was praying behind him ربنا ولك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه the words that we're going to study now فلما انصرف so when this person left or when the Prophet ﷺ finished from his prayer rather the meaning of these words قال من المتكلم the Prophet ﷺ said who is the one that was speaking قال أنا the person said me O Prophet of Allah the Prophet ﷺ said رأيت بضعة وثلاثين ملكا I saw between uh, 30 or so between 30 or so angels يبتدرونها أيهم يكتبها أول I saw 30 or so angels racing towards that good deed that you did which one of them would be the first to write it down وهذا لفت البخاري and this is the uh, collection the hadith collected the narration collected by Imam al-Bakhari may Allah have mercy upon him شرح مفردات الحديث explaining the words of the hadith قوله ربنا ولك الحمد ربنا ولك الحمد وقد جاءت الحديث صحيحة بإثبات الواو وبحذفها so this narration this part of the narration ربنا ولك الحمد the authentic narrations have come with the wow and without the wow. So you can say Rabbana lak alhamd or you can say Rabbana wa lak alhamd. These are two ways of saying it. Also there's a third and fourth way. You can add Allahumma to it. So you can say Allahumma Rabbana wa lak alhamd or you can say Allahumma Rabbana lak alhamd. So in any case you could say this with the wow or without the wow. Wa kilahuma ja'at bihi riwayat kathira. والمختار أنه على وجه الجواز and Imam Nawi رحمه الله تعالى explaining this he says that there's many narrations proving that the different ways of saying them are authentic and the person is allowed to choose whichever of them he so wishes وأن الأمرين جائزان ولا ترجيح لأحدهما على الآخر and there is no proving that one is better to be said than the other so all of them are permissible these four ways that we mentioned and it's good to say them in different ways at different times. Why? Because this keeps you engaged with your dhikr. As we've mentioned before, it gives you nashat. Uh, it stops you from malal. It stops you from being bored of saying one th- the one way all of the time. The same time, the same dhikr all of the time would make you slightly bored. So if you say it in different ways, it keeps you engaged with the dhikr and it gives you that energy. So, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, hamdan kathira. So Rabbana wa lakal hamd, our Lord to you is all praise, to you belongs all praise. Rabbana wa lakal hamd, our Lord to you belongs all praise. Hamdan kathira, ay la hasra lahu wa la adad. Meaning that, hamdan kathiran, much praise, there is no restriction to the amount of praise which you are deserving of. It cannot be restricted, it cannot be quantified, it's unquantifiable. لِأَنَّ اللَّهُ وَالْمُسْتَحِقْ لِلْمُحَامِدْ كُلَّهَا because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's deserving of all praise and all types of praise. قوله طيبا حمدا كثيرا طيبا أي حمدا لا نقص فيه ولا عيب A praise wherein there is no deficiency in it or no blemishes. لأن الله طيب في أسمائه وصفاته وأفعاله Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure in His names, His attributes and His actions. وقال العيني رحمه الله تعالى the great scholar, he said, وَمَعْنَا طَيِّبًا And the meaning of طَيِّبًا خَالِصًا And he pure, صَالِحًا Good أو نَظِيفًا مِنَ الْرِيَاءِ Or uh, pure and clean from showing off. In any case, طَيِّبًا means pure. حَمْدٍ كَثِيرًا طَيِّبًا Lots of praise, never ending and pure. Mubarakan fihi. And the next word, Mubarakan fihi. Ay da'iman mutawasilan. Mubarakan fihi meaning always. So Mubarakan comes from the word Baraka. And as we know, Baraka linguistically comes from the word, one of its meaning is Birka, a large pool of water. So that large pool of water is present for a long period of time and it gives lots and lots of benefit. Likewise is the meaning of Baraka. Baraka is something which is abundant, gives abundant benefits and lasts for a long time. So this hamd, which is mubarakan fi a da'iman mutawasilan, always happening and continual. لِأَنَّ كُلَّ خَيْرٍ فِي الدَّارَيْنِ هُوَ مِنْ أَثَارِ بَرَكَتِهِ Because all good which we find in this life and the next is from the effects of the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the barakah of praising Allah. 
وقال العظيم ال... وقال العظيم الابادي the scholar Azim al Azim al Abadi, Rahimullah, may Allah have mercy upon him, he said, Hamdan da barakatin. We praise Allah, a praising which is full of barakah, full of blessings. Da'iman la yanqati'. We always praise him, a praising that never stops. Li'anna ni'amahu la tanqati'u anna. Why? Because his favors and blessings never stop descending upon us. They were continually descending upon us. Fayyambaghi an yakuna hamduna ghayda munqati'in aydan. So it's imperative also that our praise for these blessings and our praise to Allah Azza for being perfect and majestic is also never ending and never stops. And in the hadith, it said that when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that he saw 30 or so angels racing towards this good deed. al ma bayna thalatha ila tisa. al is that which is between three to seven. Fil ashur in the most uh, in the most famous of um, explanations. وَقَالَ أَبُوْ عَبَيْدَةً And Abu Abayda, he said, مَا بَيْنَ ثَلَاثَ إِلَى خَمْسِ That which is between three to five. وَقِيلَ غَيْرُ ذَلِكَ And other than that was said. And this was quoted by Ibn Rajab in his Fathu al-Bari. May Allah have mercy upon him. ثَالِثًا مَا يُسْتَفَادُ مِنَ الْحَدِيثِ What do we benefit from the hadith? Some benefits that we can take. أَلَى الْمَعْمُومَ أَنْ يُبَادِ إِلَى قَوْلِهِ رَبَّنَا وَلَكِ الْحَمْدُ it's upon the one who is listening, the upon the one who is following the Imam. After the Imam, he says, Sami Allah liman hamida, that we should rush to say, Rabbana wa lakil hamd. Aqiba tasmi al Imam. After the Imam has said, Sami Allah liman hamida. Why? Because in the hadith, it was mentioned, Faqala rajul wa ra'ahu. Fa. So a man said behind the Prophet. And this fa is known as fa a ta'qib. Fa li ta'qib. That this fa it gives the indication that the action of the man took place straight away. So the man straight away after hearing the Imam saying Sami Allah liman hamida, hearing the Prophet saying Sami Allah liman hamida, he raised ahead and he said Rabbana wa lakil hamd hamdan kathiran tayyiban barakan fi. So we say it straight away after hearing the Imam if you want to say it. Also we look and we benefit in the hadith in the narration Musabaqatul malaika wa manafasatihim fil khair that how the angels they compete and race one another to do good, right? And wa mahabbatuhum li ahlihi and how much they love the people that do good. The angels, they're always looking to write down good deeds because this pleases them. They were created to worship Allah. They only know to worship Allah. And it brings them great harm and disdain and it hurts them when they see Allah being displeased. Like it hurts the true believer. The true believer's heart breaks and shatters when he sees Allah being displeased openly. So imagine the angels, how much they are displeased when they see Allah being disobeyed openly. Are we from those that please the angels? Are we from those that are harming the angels? Think about it. The angels are with us. Do we force them to see and to look upon evil deeds that are shameful, that we wouldn't do in front of other creation, yet we do it in front of the angels? May Allah protect us. So we have to be very careful not to do these kind of things in front of the angels, let alone in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fourthly, khususiyatun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning... Um, Khususiyat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being peculiar to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi ru'yatihi li ha'ulai al-malaika that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was able to see these angels duna man ma'ahum min al-sahaba and the, those who were surrounding him from amongst the companions they couldn't see the angels however it was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that could see the angels however this is not unrestricted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cannot unrestrictedly see the unseen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can only see that from the unseen which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him because the unseen it belongs to Allah azawajal. and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a human being قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in many places say that I am only certainly a human being like you are though he has the honour of being the best of creation and the one that was loved by Allah azawajal, and the one that received the final revelation and many other special characteristics however he still remained a human being so he couldn't see the unseen unrestrictedly. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jinn, for example, Alimu al ghaybi fala yudhiru ala ghaybihi ahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all knowing of the unseen, and his unseen is not shown to anybody else. But then Allah makes an exception. He says, Illa man min rasulin, except for the one that Allah is pleased from amongst his messengers. فَإِنَّهُ يَسْلُكُ مِن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهُ مِن خَلْفِهِ رَصَدًا لِيَعْلَمَ أَنْ قَدْ أَبْلَغُوا رِسَالَةِ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَحَاطَ بِمَا لَدَيْهِمْ وَأَحْسَالَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ
that the Prophet ﷺ and other messengers, they are given sometimes from the unseen as a way of helping them and establishing them and furthering their cause of spreading their da'wah, right? So it's not unrestricted. And inshallah, this is what we have to say on these adhkar. Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray that we can go back and listen once again and reflect upon the meanings and truly be from those who praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our situations in life as much as we are able to do so. Because when we truly praise Allah deeply and consciously, it brings about a joy and it brings about benefits which are uh, unmeasurable. So we should be from those that praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and learn how to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anything which was correct was from Allah azza wa jal the mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan inshallah see you next time around inshallah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh